Hello everyone, uh, I'm Bo Chong uh, from Google's Envoy platform team. Uh, today my talk is uh, making Envoy uh, resilient uh, to sudden increase in load. So before I start, like, uh, I want to mention this is originally a uh, talk with Yan, but Yan cannot be here and he was on top of the HTTP2 uh, rapid reset. Uh, last year, and uh, he did a lot of industry-wide uh, coordination work, and I will try my best to cover that part. Uh, and let's get started. Uh, today, I will uh, briefly talk about uh, what is a DOS attack uh, from the real world, and how it impacts uh, Envoy. And furthermore, I will talk about the CPU and the memory impact e effect uh, during the traffic spike. Uh, as well as the mitigations in Envoy. And then I will give all some uh, general practice to protect our system uh, with the all-loan manager uh, and the system level configurations. So uh, what is a DOS attack? And uh, it is like denial of uh, service and uh, it is a malicious uh, attempt to uh, disrupt the normal functioning of our target server and it can overwhelm our system uh, and also exhaust its resources, including like CPU, memory, uh, like a network bandwidth, uh, file descriptors, uh, and so on. Like there are also uh, multiple types of attacks from protocol to application level, and also like some high QPS attack uh, as well as low and slow attack. So here is a diagram. Uh, that I want to cover today uh, is from last year's uh, industry-wide HTTP2 rapid reset DOS attack, and uh, it's a pretty very high QPS, and it reached up to uh, 400 uh, million RPS globally for Google, and uh, these are like flood of uh, malicious requests uh, with the purpose of exalting uh, resources and uh, preventing our ser server to uh, to serve normal traffic. And today, like the focus is more on the CPU and memory impact, and how do we mitigate that in, in Envoy. So uh, let's, let's deep dive like what happens for the rapid uh, reset attack. Uh, before uh, for that attack, I, I, I want to mention like HTTP2 uh, is a binary protocol uh, that makes it uh, possible to uh, fit many uh, requests into a single TCP connection, and uh, it supports like uh, concurrent uh, streams, and uh, usually it has uh, con concurrent streams number setting, uh, which is called like max concurrent stream. Um, and the number uh, in production uh, environment is usually uh, 100. Uh, so like we can see from the left diagram, uh, like we can say uh, 100 requests, we can send 100 requests uh, uh, concurrently, and, and then we can uh, get uh, 100 response, and then we continue to send the requests both uh, concurrently and uh, sequentially. So what happens for the, for the rapid reset in HTTP2, uh, the process is like the attacker can uh, quickly create a lot of requests and then immediately uh, cancel them through the reset stream. So the effect is like it can create much more uh, streams than the max, max concurrent stream setting in HTTP2. And like specifically for this tag, Envoy will spend a lot of time uh, create, creating the bookkeeping structure and then uh, deleting them in the system. So furthermore, like, Envoy also did not uh, limit the amount of work uh, per connection, and it will eagerly uh, process any requests coming in. Uh, so, like we will have, we will have some effect uh, for for this. So the first thing is like the latency impact, because like it is oh, okay. So here's a diagram like uh, from a single uh, rapid RS reset load test to a single worker thread Envoy like the impact on the concurrent traffic uh, from a single rapid reset connection could be uh, 200 million uh, seconds added tail latency. And also the latency impact is also cumulative uh, from multiple abusive connections. 
and then the, the, the repeating uh, creating requests and destroying them in Envoy will eat all our CPU and make the process, uh, make the CPU start. So like furthermore, like, like let's see the, if the, the, the general architecture here, like the modern uh, proxies and load balancers uh, usually do not work in isolation and they are inter integrated with a lot of sidecar services like the uh, WAF or uh, rate limiting, access logging, or even the external authorization. So with the CPU service, like the latency of the sidecar RPC connection are also uh, very high as we uh, together with the, the mainstream uh, client request. So what will happen like the, the, the first thing is like the RPC call out will well, timeout and uh, the feedback loop with the L4 uh, firewall will also not work uh, due to the CPU starvation. And uh, moreover, like uh, sometimes, like it is not uncommon to uh, config some sidecar services uh, fail open, and uh, just to prevent the failure uh, in the sidecar service from cascading uh, to the production traffic. So under this scenario, like uh, some requests will go through to your uh, uh, upstream service, make things worse. So also it's, it's kind of challenging to recover uh, from this scenario. Uh, like uh, the feedback loop from the, the wolf to edge uh, alpha firewalls will, will be broken because like the, the whole process is solved and uh, it, it will, get few or no requests from Envoy, and so that's like the, the targeted IP cannot be blocked. And access log may also be overwhelmed and uh, to dropping records, so it, to make things even worse. So here we introduce several mitigations uh, in Envoy, and the first one is uh, max request per IO cycle. Uh, as we mentioned before, like because uh, we, the attacker can create a uh, much more uh, concurrent streams, and it will limit uh, the the number of requests processed uh, from single TCP segment, uh, just to uh, improve the fairness of CPU usage among uh, all all client service all all client connections, and also this may require. Uh, turning, uh, turning for your traffic if you want to set a default value. And I will uh, talk more about this configuration later. And setting to one uh, may increase the response latency because you will use more uh, IO cycle. Uh, furthermore, like we, we specific to uh, this rapid reset, uh, we add some detection uh, mechanisms uh, for this premature reset and the total account and the threshold to consider it is the reset. Um, so, like the, the the max request per IO cycle is uh, does not like mitigate effects the DOS attack, uh, but it designed to make to reduce the re latency impact and to let other process or overload actions to uh, to function under attack. So also there will be some uh, future improvement uh, to better target uh, costly uh, connections uh, like through the resource carting uh, in all of manager. Um, a, a final note is like uh, check your uh, external authorization does not fail open uh, to protect your uh, backend server. So uh, to continue to mitigate this scenario, like I, I want to uh, talk about the role of all load manager here. So we, we have talked about the CPU impact. So nowadays a large system uh, can scale uh, horizontally and vertically. So scanning out uh, could take the other minutes uh, to be enough to serve enough traffic. Uh, then the most important part is that we need to make sure our system uh, be healthy uh, to scale to avoid cache loops crash loops, uh, especially at the very beginning. And, uh, and here's where the auto manager will, will take effect, and it is uh, from many seconds to seconds order uh, to protect the envoy and your system. So uh, from the previous example, uh, we learned that like sudden increased traffic can make CPU saturated, 
And, and to get things even worse, it, it can continue to eat all our memory uh, in a very short, short time uh, to crash our system. So one of the reason is that like the event queue uh, length increased a lot, and other uh, system protections like the all load manager actions uh, can will not be executed. Uh, another reason is like high QPS, small requests can also uh, amplify the memory effect in our uh, load balancers. Uh, like to process this small uh, request, like we need to do more work uh, in our system than the client's efforts. So here's one example. Uh, we, are, we, we are trying to be very nice, uh, usually, uh, to our customers with a very nice response. Uh, however, but they may uh, bring more uh, burden to our system and uh, moreover, like generating a huge, uh, small, uh, a high QPS small request is really low uh, for clients for them making the situation worse. So uh, here, like we, we want to improve uh, our situation, and I, I want to briefly uh, introduce all manager in Envoy. Uh, this diagram uh, shows the critical components in all of manager, uh, including uh, resource manager and uh, different actions. So we can monitor the, the, the CPU memory and uh, network usage file descriptor and so on uh, with a specific uh, threshold. Uh, when a specific threshold is reached, uh, our load actions uh, will be uh, post to the event queue in, in worker thread. So we call that like traditional overload magic actions. Uh, these actions include things like uh, turning off the keep alive and shorting uh, timeouts or like uh, resetting high memory streams or shrink, shrinking the heap and more. So these are very important and useful, uh, especially for handling some uh, specific DOS attacks and uh, all load scenarios, uh, like the low and slow uh, attack or large payload request attack. However, like for the CPU storage and uh, traffic spike, uh, small requests with uh, very high QPS suddenly, um, these actions are usually uh, too slow to take effect. So as I uh, brief mentioned uh, before, uh, the latency uh, in uh, dispatching uh, the overload actions may cause Envoy to run, the, run out of memory uh, before the necessary actions are taken. So to mitigate this scenario, uh, Envoy uh, introduced uh, proactive load shedding points, and the concept and idea is instead of relying on the post mechanisms, uh, the data plan will uh, directly pull and check the current memory usage uh, reported by the resources monitor. And this will allow like a faster uh, and more responsive load management in, uh, in, the, in the system to shed the load. So uh, with this strategy, like, it, is, it is critical to identify uh, memory intensive points uh, within our data plan. So this diagram shows uh, uh, the traffic flow uh, when an external client wants to connect your uh, proxy. Um, the first point of the load setting occurs at the connection level. Uh, and, and then once connections are uh, accepted, uh, the next setting point is at the level of HTTP request. And for example, the codec creation uh, is some kind of heavy, and we also have the decoder headers. Uh, which is like typically important for HTTP2 traffic. Uh, from from Envoy's uh, internal details, like we could have list of filter chains, uh, and which could also be memory heavy. Uh, we want to stop here. Uh, then, like mentioned before, we usually have a, a lot of side streams, and uh, we can also add a checking point. Uh, finally, like the last potential uh, low setting point is a le at level of the upstream uh, connection or request creation in router. So here is a full list of low set point in uh, Envoy uh, with more detailed name, uh, which covers the critical uh, places uh, we discussed before. 
and, and more info uh, can be found from on waste stock. Uh, so uh, here's an, an example of an outload manager configuration. Uh, it, increase, uh, it includes settings like refresh interval, uh, resource monitors can be the CPU and memory, or like your own extensions, and wireless and uh, and wireless uh, actions and load chat points can be configured, uh, such as like the TCP connection acceptance and or like HTTP to go away. Um, I, it's also uh, worth noting there's a scaling threshold to proactively manage resources before reaching a critical threshold. So uh, here are some additional notes to protect our system. Uh, firstly, uh, consider always con configuring uh, TCP listener exception uh, to protect the system at the very beginning. Uh, furthermore, like for H2 and H3, uh, go away uh, plays a critical role uh, to signal like our server is all ramped, uh, is, is uh, intense to shut down. Uh, and it's also benef beneficial for uh, redirecting a connection uh, to other containers. And from the configuration part, uh, we can turn the threshold uh, to like ensure a good portion of traffic or go away signals. Uh, another point here is consider dropping load uh, around uh, side streams. So uh, here I want to uh, mention that it is not only uh, overload manager to protect your system, like it's always a system. Uh, I want to uh, emphasize two powerful settings in, in Envoy. Uh, the first one is like we, I mentioned before for the rapid reset, the max request per IO cycles. Uh, that is uh, very important. Uh, it mainly works for HTTP2 or H3 uh, with multiplex streams. And uh, this is recommended, like a default value uh, should be set. And it ensures the, the, the fire use of CPU cycles and can furthermore uh, benefit other processes uh, to, uh, to process. Uh, setting to a low val la value one uh, will, will impact the latency, but like setting to a relatively high value like 20 uh, can improve your uh, system's reliability uh, without Im impacting your uh, tail, uh, tail latency. Uh, it, it is important like we need to load test it based on uh, your system. Uh, another important uh, value is the max connection to accept uh, per socket event. Uh, only listener uh, will uh, by default uh, accept many new connections uh, in a single I/O event, and from the production metrics, like it can be very high, up to uh, fifteen thousands or more. Um, the effect is that it's, it is very memory heavy uh, in a single I/O event, uh, and uh, so only will run out of memory before the all manager has a chance to react. So in, in increasing the frequency of the re resources monitor. Uh, will not help here uh, we are, uh, with more uh, cost since this is a single event that cannot be interrupted. Uh, again, like the value uh, should be set through the load test and the setting to 200 may not impact your uh, tail latency. So last but not least, like always examine the buffer size configuration. Uh, for example, like some filters uh, will, will pre-allocate some unnecessary buffers, and it, this can be turned based on your system and usage. Uh, one example here is the TRC inspector listener filter uh, buffer uh, could, could have a default uh, 60, 64 kilobytes buffer size, which the actual traffic may not need that money. And then Envoy also has a great flow control mechanisms. Uh, consider choosing the proper uh, buffer limit uh, based on your uh, traffic from different levels like listener, cluster, and even the H2 stream uh, settings. And the last practice like, is always examine your customized future uh, buffer usage in your uh, data plan. Uh, hopefully, uh, this 
talk uh, provides some valuable insights uh, to uh, make the Envoy deployment, de deployment more resilient, uh, especially for the traffic spike scenario. Uh, and there will be some future work uh, to better target abused uh, connections, uh, but I will wrap it up here. Uh, and here are the reference and uh, the last thing, like thank you, uh, Yan, uh, Kevin, Katiana, Alisa, and many others uh, make Envoy uh, more uh, resilient. Thank you.